Hello, it's Chris Young. What do you say we take a few minutes and let's meet your brand new Forest River Ozark 1680 BHS KX. Congratulations on getting one of the best entry level RVs in the market, the Forest River Ozark. And let's talk about some of the features you're gonna find on the Forest River Ozark travel trailer. The toy haulers will be a little bit different uh, and there will be a separate video for the toy haulers, but this is for the travel trailer. Now, right up front, You'll see you got your hand crank, not only for connecting to your tow vehicle, but also for helping level this RV out. Uh, you always wanna do side to side and then front to back when it comes to leveling. And you just got your hand crank, you know, clockwise lifts it, counterclockwise lowers it. Right behind there, you'll find your 20 pound LP tank. If you do wanna get an additional one, you gotta do that through your service team. This works pretty much like the propane tank on your grills at home. You got the connector cap there, make sure that's tight, open and close got your regulator here and right behind it are the rails to hold the coach battery. Now, it's not in the most convenient location, but it is convenient to have it. The battery disconnect on the frame. When you see that there, plus the key can be removed for additional security. That's so you don't have to worry about draining that battery constantly. You can cut it off with the disconnect. Come around to the campsite, you'll notice you do have a, a 10 amp quick connect for your solar panel. I always suggest for people to get these because it does help trickle charge that battery. And since you have a 12 volt fridge inside of all the Forest River Ozarks, this can come in extremely handy. Now I've been holding this tool because this is what you got to use to raise and lower your stab jacks, your stabilizers on your Ozark. What you do is you put that on the nut and then clockwise lowers, counterclockwise raises. Uh, since these are the kind of the bigger feet, we always suggest, if you can, get the pads uh, to put under there. Not only will it protect the feet, but it'll also help, especially if you're on uneven ground, you know, or, you know, just always good to have. Steel fold-up steps leading into your main entry. Fairly simple, but as always, if you're not comfortable, if you have bad backs, bad knees, see if you can get some assistance. But with these, you just lift up and you just lift the stow away and same thing, pull down, make sure they're all the way extended. You'll notice that there's a drive over here on the side and then just grab the handle to fold down. So your Forest River Ozark also comes with the Solera 12 volt awning by Lippert. And this does have an adjustable pitch on it, which is easy to adjust. You just push and pull, but I always like to recommend two things. Number one, when you are going to adjust the pitch, make sure you're on the inside of the awning so that when you do pull it down, to adjust it. If there's any moisture on top, it'll fall not on you because you don't want that impromptu bath. The other thing is before you get ready to roll the awning in, make sure it's back level so that when you roll the awning in, you don't get those cockeyed awnings or cause the bottom to pop out, anything like that. Everything stays working the way it's intended. These also have a manual override on them. There's a little rubber stopper on the top there that you may or may not be able to see, but it's just a 7 16th drive bolt in or 17 16th uh, drive can go in there and run it in and out manually for you. You do have uh, extra large door guard here that doubles as a handle when in transit that helps keep the door secure. And then when you're set up at a campsite, this helps bring you in. You got a 20,000 BTU suburban furnace on your Forest River Ozark as well. You'll notice that the furnace will have these two vents on it. That's where your furnace is. So when you see that, just know that when it's running, there'll be hot air coming out. So if you're gonna put camp chairs, set them up here under the awning, try not to block this, especially if the furnace is running because hot air and fabric don't always mix. Now, this panel here is the back of your suburban water heater. Few things to note about this one. If you're gonna change the anode rod, you do have the pressure release valve up here to release the pressure if you need it. If for some reason your water heater just needs to be reset, you'll notice you got the double reset button here. You got your igniter right here behind the flame guard. And this is your flash tube or your flame tube. Um, propane has a chemical in it called mercaptan. And mercaptan, if I'm saying it properly, which probably not, is really delicious smelling to bugs. Bees, spiders, dirt daubers, they really like it. So if you've had this thing in storage or it hasn't been used for a while and there might be a spider web in there or some dirt or debris, that can cause the water heater not to work. You can take just a regular pipe cleaner and clean that out. The other thing to note is if there's black debris coming up out of the flash uh, cover right here, that also means there's some uh, debris in there that needs to be cleaned out and that will help keep your water heater going for a while. Oh, and the anode rod. 
You can swatch that out about, you know, every year. You'll see here, it's a metal anode rod right there. Just, you know, flip that out every year or so. Just to keep everything clean, get those sediments out of the water. Fresh water fill is right here. You'll auto always notice the fresh water fill should have a pressure release valve or a vent right there. That's just a fail safe so that if you're filling it up, it gets too full, bam, water will start flowing out. Uh, your fresh water drains are underneath on the other side of the frame right here. Got your fresh water drain there. This is an enclosed underbelly, which is known as the accessibility. You also have nitro filled radial tires on here as well on those Dexter Easy Loop axles. Um, I like to tell people when you're uh, about every thousand miles, that's when you want to grease those uh, Dexter Easy Loop axles, one, maybe two pumps. But talk to your specialist or give us a call at Camping World because it could vary based on how often you use it, what part of the world you're in, this, that, and the other thing. GFCI outlet is right there if you need to charge anything. Uh, if you're Forest River Ozark does come with an outside kitchen. You'll have the little mini Everchill fridge. This plugs into 110. You'll see the little mini freezer up there. Plus you'll have the squeaky suburban griddle. These are great because of the cooking space that you have, but it does come with a propane connector that goes to the LP Quick Connect located underneath your Forest River Ozark. It should be somewhere near where the external kitchen is. You have an open and a closed valve there. Just make sure that you do have propane. And I like to recommend to people too, uh, if you do have the outside kitchen, get two propane tanks. Just always helpful. Rear stabilizer jacks work just like the front. You do have your sewer hose storage here located in the bumper, a spare tire. You do have the hot and cold shower external here, which is great for washing off the pets. You are set up for backup camera as well. Very nice feature there. Cable connection, when you get to the campsites uh, or wherever you're gonna have some entertainment, you can plug your cable in right there. You got your low point drains and your main terminations right here. Gray tank and black tank. Gray tank, you know, with the gray handle, black tank with the black handle. Now with these, we like to tell people, if you're set up at the campsite, you don't always have to have these open, especially the black tank, because with the black tank, that solid waste can cause pyramiding. That'll give you, well, if that happens, a lot of times you can get false readings on the full or clear. You can get some difficulty when flushing it. So what we like to tell people is when you're at the campsite, leave that closed for a little while, check the command panel to see, you know, how much is in there. If it is getting full, that's when you dump it. Dump the black first and then dump the gray. You got your 30 amp connection right here and a black tank flush as well as a city water connection. Be sure to pay attention to these and do not get these uh, confused because with the black tank flush, this is extremely handy. Use your water hose, but not your potable water hose for your city water connection. And also when you do plug this in, before you apply any water pressure, make sure that black tank is open. That's a bad day if it's not open and you go to fill it up and put some water pressure in there. You do have the warm groove slides on your Forest River Ozark. And you do have magnetic anti-slam doors on all of your storage compartments that lock there and 751 can lock those. So now that we've talked about some outside features of your Forest River Ozark, what do you say we go take a look on the inside and see what type of features we have going on in there? Okay, so first thing you're probably gonna wanna do is find the control panel inside your Forest River Ozark. You'll see it somewhere near the cabinetry, near the main door. And this is the KIV panel. We're just gonna go from top to bottom. So one of these will control the awning. One of these will control the slide. So it's down for out, up for in for both of these. Now, right above that, you'll have your water and your light controls. If you're hooked up to city water, you don't need to worry about your water pump because this operates if your boondocking pulls water from the fresh tank. Your water heat when you cut this on, you'll notice the DSI light comes on, the direct spark ignition. Once that's lit, it will go off. But since it's propane based, what you want to do is make sure you have propane. If you got propane, you cut this on and it's still not lighting, you can check that flame tube outside. If everything still looks good, bring it in. Let our folks take a look at it for you. Lights are pretty self-explanatory, up for on, down for off. And then you have your battery as well as your tank controls. 
Now, if you go to run your slide out and you're not hooked up to shore power, you hit this. If you're at two thirds or above, you should be okay. If you're below two thirds, that's probably why your slide isn't running out. We like to recommend at least 12 volts to run the slide out. Um, if you're hooked up to shore power and it's still not running out, bring it in, let our folks at Camper World take a look at it for you. Now, as far as your tanks, fresh, black, and gray. If you have flushed these, but you go back and check and they're still reading two thirds or even full, chances are there's a line of water connected in between the two sensors on the side of that tank. Give it about 15 minutes, that should drip down and disconnect the connectivity between the sensors and give you the true reading of empty. If not, chances are something's wrong, maybe a sensor's bad, bring it in, let our folks at Camper World take a look at it. Now, let's do the sweep and check out some of the other features inside your Forest River Ozark. Right here on the kitchen, you're gonna notice the travel trailers come with the Greystone two burner cooktop with the glass cover, not only giving you some additional prep space, but also doubling as a backsplash. Now to operate these, what you do is you push the knob in and you go counterclockwise until this angled piece comes around to the ignition light right here, the little flame light. If you have propane, you should hear it start to running. Then you take a long wooden match or a or butane lighter, just be careful, and you light it. And then you can turn this back to high or low or off wherever you need it. Just make sure when you're done that you cut it off. Now we'll close that up. I did accidentally rip that off. Your sink. You have the undermounted sink right there with covers that double as cutting boards. You'll also notice you have a GFCI outlet and dual USB charging ports up there. That's where you can plug in your phone, do some charging. Your Greystone hood, very simple, light, fan, and then your Greystone microwave right there, whether it's 900 watt or 1000 watt, pretty simple, operates the same way as a microwave does. Right here is your Suburban 20,000 BTU furnace. You'll notice that by the type of grate that it has there. Your Everchill 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt fridge. This is the travel lock. When you're not using it, always say, you know, keep this on anyway, just for additional safety and security. But it is 12 volt, which means it'll run off the coach battery. Uh, the only thing you want to watch out for is that if you're running off the coach battery, it will drain the power. So if you have that solar panel plugged in to the trickle charger, that'll really help out. But to cut this thing off and on, you just push the button for five to 10 seconds and that'll cut it off. Here's how you adjust uh, your freezer controls, cold and colder. And then you also have your temperature controls down here as well. You just push the button to cycle through however cold you want your fridge to stay. Now, these are frost resistant and vibration smart, so they do a much better job of cooling things down, but they will drain the battery. That 12 volt will suck that coach battery dry. You'll also come with a 13,500 BTU Coleman Mach AC on this one, roof mounted here. Pretty easy to control. You got your vents open and closing right here as well as in the back, you got your filters on the side, you got your off, your high cool, your low cool, as well as the fan options and the temperature controls. If you wanna go warm or if you wanna go cold, you got the turn knobs for those there. Uh, you do need to be hooked up to shore power in order to run that. You also have a vent and fan here, which is a, a 12 volt fan, so this will run off the coach battery. Just a push button there and the turn knob to open the fan. Bunks, very self-explanatory. Just be careful getting up and down. USB charging on both, plus the mushroom lights. And the way to cut these off and on, there's a little stopper in the middle. Just push it, cut off and on. That's pretty much the same case all the way through this coach. Plastic bowl, high rise with the foot flush on this one. And you'll notice if you just need to put some water in the bowl, you just push the, the pedal down just a little bit. That'll get your water in the bowl. To totally dump, you push and hold. Uh, now, if you do have water in there and it is closed, but you notice it's constantly draining, chances are the seal, this black seal down here is probably just a little worn out. Uh, and then it's not, the stopper isn't going all the way over it. So, or underneath it. So what you can do is you can just take some Vaseline on a glove and just wipe around the bottom there and that should help it. Hot and cold on your sink over here, as well as GFCI outlet there. Herringbone patterned uh, 30 by 36 shower in here with hot and cold and your shower nozzle there with the spray controls switch right here. And another vent and fan up top that works the same way as the one in there. Just push the button, cut the fan on and turn the knob to open it up. 
if it's a really hot day, a good way to cool the coach down is to open both of those fans, open the doors, and then boom, that'll help pull the air out. Now with your 20,000 BTU Suburban heater on here, this is the controls for that. You'll see colder and off all the way over here and warmer all the way over there. This temperature gauge will let you know uh, how hot it is, how cold it is. We're not hooked up to power, so it's not working right now, but that's pretty much how you control it. USB charging there. You also will have some Versa loungers, Versa, uh, or excuse me, Versa, versatile furniture in here, the Versa furniture as I like to call it. For example, this one, we have the chaise and we have the love seat that also turns out into a jackknife. And what's cool about this, sure, you got this good space, they're comfy, it has the material that doesn't stick to sweat. Uh, it's not like that leatherette, it's a completely different material. Uh, I like it because it's a little bit more comfortable. But if you need to do the sofa, just always be careful moving any component inside your Forest River Ozark. You got a bad back, you got bad shoulders, bad knees or whatever, ask for some assistance. But the way you pull the jackknife out, lift up on the bottom and pull slightly, the back will lay down. And now you can actually just remove this pillow and you have a full size bed right there. Or somebody can sit, somebody can lay down, however you wanna do it. And then to get it back in place, once again, just always be careful lift up on the bottom. I like to grab the top and pull, and then it just slides into place. Uh, you do have some shades on your windows that are held by these little suspension cords right here. These over time will wear out. So to get them tighter, you just take your finger and you just wrap it around the knob here, but make sure you do it on both sides because what that'll do is that'll keep the tension so that the shade will stay in the position that you want it. We do have the Murphy bed on this one. I'm just gonna remove the armrests here and show you how this works. Very easy. Just once again, always be careful with any component inside your RV. I can't stress that enough. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to make sure that you're safe, but you also wanna make sure you don't damage anything inside your RV. So if you have the Murphy bed, you'll notice the lock is either gonna be on the camp or the off camp side. Very easy to operate. Just make sure that you're not too much pressure on it. You can't lift it up. So sometimes you may have to push this in a little bit to raise the latch, slide it out the way, lower the base down, grab your hyperallergenic mattress, and bam, there you go. So hopefully uh, this has given you some insight and some tips on how to use your Forest River Ozark travel trailer. But if at any time, if you have questions, we have an elite service team standing by in over 180 locations nationwide that if you need to bring in, get something fixed, or work on your RV, we can absolutely help you out with that. Just come see us, because at the end of the day, we wanna make sure your RVing experience is the best it absolutely can be.